Hello, world. Welcome to The Neighbor Ladies. I'm Colleen Cruz. It's our new show. It's The Neighbor Ladies. Welcome to our neighborhood. We are the ladies in your neighborhood. We're in the neighborhood where bomb shelters still exist, where fancy freeze means more than the cold shoulder. So pull up a chair and join our Tupperware party. Let me introduce the neighbor ladies. We have our first neighbor lady, Boston. Hey, Boston, how's it going? It's going really good. It's so nice to be in the neighborhood. I'm usually not allowed in any neighborhood, so this is a treat. That's a bunch of bullshit, and you know that, right? I mean, it's... it's. I've on. been discovered. You've been discovered. I've been discovered. You've been discovered. You're what in the neighborhood. I say? I, they even let me live in the suburbs. I'm very excited. We're going to hear all about that in just a minute. Oh, enough of me. And we, right, because <laughs> we're going to go to the next neighbor lady. We've got Karen J. Karen J. hey, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> hey, it's going good. Good. Glad, I'm great to be here. Glad to hear. It. We'll know more about all of us in just a second. And our next neighbor lady, Suzanne. Suzanne Nielsen. It's me, Suzanne. How's Hi. <laughs> all right. So we're the neighbor ladies, and uh, you know we're figuring it out. Let me. Let me. Uh, <laughs> can you tell it's been a while since I've done this? Okay. Here's the deal. Boston and I. I I'm Colleen Cruz, and we were walking around. I'm the last neighbor lady, by the way. And we, Boston and I were walking around Lake Calhoun, and she was making me laugh. And we were talking about the news of the day, whatever that is. And we were talking about our lives. And I thought, hey, you know what? Let's make this a podcast. All the kids are doing it. And then we got uh, Karen J in on it and Suzanne in on it. And it's kind of like The View and kind of not. Except and it's, it's better. Except it's better. It's kind of it's kind of like the chew. Except it's kind of not. It's kind of <laughs> like we don't have a lot of food, but we can talk about anything we want. We can talk about anything we want, we and can swear we've we can. I Ooh, said I think I said unrated within the first unrated ten yes. seconds. We could get a swear jar, and then <laughs> whenever somebody drops a big swear word like they do at my house. You put money in the jar. What's your favorite swear word? Fuck. Ooh. I'm sorry. No, don't. <laughs> we weren't going to we weren't gonna talk about recreational activities till later, girls. Is it swearing as a recreational activity? Well, you missed the joke. But anyways, that's <laughs> my favorite <laughs> word. Fuck. Oh, I see. We're talking about activities. Anyways, F is really a huge word at my house because I have teenagers. So if we can get like $200 in the swear jar. It's have your like kids a- ever said, fuck you, mom? Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> have they really? Oh, I'm a mean mom, yes. No way. Seriously, they have, yeah. They have? Yeah. At what age? Yeah. They don't respect you, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it hasn't happened in about 18 months, two days, and about 42 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. The worst mine I've said is I hate you. Yeah. 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 No, I, don't know. I mean, it, it was only like once, once, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty, we'll talk more later. I haven't <laughs> said, I haven't that. said, I can't remember ever saying that to my mom i said i I said once to my mother when i was of course it always happens when you're a teenager and you say the worst possible things Mm -hmm. to your parents when you're a teenager you just think what's the and i I said to my mom i think i I think i might have been stoned not sure i was high there for about (laughs) three years solid (laughs) but i think i i was really mad at her because she read my diary and i was trying to think of the shittiest thing i could say to her and i said i hope your guts are twisting and (laughs) She laughed so hard. <laughs> she looked at me for a second. And she said, my guts? You hope my guts are twisting? What is that? Who says that? And that was it. I felt ridiculous. I felt absolutely ridiculous. But that, that's the worst thing I ever said to her. I violated personal space. I did go in the room looking for something. And you then did not. I did. I did. And um, I was looking for, um, I just wanted proof that they knew about birth control. And um, I got the big F-bomb thrown at me, and probably rightly so. So I violated privacy. It involved a two-hour family meeting, of which I, I lived through. All right. Because I'm here tonight, so that's a good thing. God, you have family you, meetings and everything? Oh, God, it's formal at my house. It really is. That does sound, it we've, sounds done, like, we've done family meetings. Look, I married a have Lutheran really? man. Yeah. Do you guys raise oh. your hand? Uh, before you talk or only me only me i'm still being punished for the (laughs) sounds like you eat off plates and everything (laughs) not paper plates yeah the real ones yeah (laughs) but i won't fix the broken dishwasher because i want them to wash their own dishes by hand anyways i digress 17 and 18 and you've got kids too right right Right. mine are 18 and 19 you don't have any kids do you i have two you do yes i have a 24 year old and a 28 year old we all have kids. We, yeah, we boys. All have two. We, we all have and boys. We, and you have boys. I have a boy oh. and a girl. Yeah, me too. I have too. a boy, boy and, and a girl. girl. Yeah. yeah. Oh, 
Slug bug. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and you know when my when my youngest coming back to, to the F word. I remember I I didn't take my kids on a lot of outings, but I did take them to Disney on Ice, and um, and one of the boys love ice skating. Right, right, right. <laughs> and and Evan was almost three, and um, and we were be we we were probably in front of a very Christian family, and when the Wicked Witch of the West came out. He stood up and gave the Wicked Witch the finger. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Like we all should. Yeah, yeah. And the people behind me were just appalled. You know, just, yeah. They probably went home and prayed for your family. Yeah, I'm sure they you, did. I yeah, gotta tell you guys a story. They had, oh. Their knees were scraping on that one, baby. You know it. The genuflecting right in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. We're just gonna go with this. We're gonna go with this topic for now. Okay, what are we talking about? Yeah, what Ice happens, skating? What happens oh. when your kids swear? Okay, so... It, you know, we're, we're now three of us are comics. Boston's a comic. Karen Jay's a comic. I'm a comic, right? The only one that's not a comic is Suzanne. And I'm not funny. No, <laughs> oh, you are yeah, very okay. funny. You're humorless. You're the one audience <laughs> member that we have for this <laughs> entire show. Um, <laughs> she's going to get normal. all of our attention, Suzanne. I know. <laughs> you truly no, are. actually, she's not normal. I rode with her here. Oh. <laughs> All you right. know what? That car trip is she, always the best way to she, find out what people The first time like. I met Suzanne, she offered to show me her tits right away. I'm not <laughs> kidding. She said, I don't know if you want to see them, but I'll show you my tits right Kids, now. Kids, save the tits for later. Where else can we go after a word like that? What were we talking like, about? Talking, I'm going to tell you a swearing story. Oh, I'm going to tell you a really swearing story. i got to shut get... up. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Can tell us Our that. kid, I don't know if your kids grew up in a comedy club. My kids grew up in a comedy club, Right. I mean, oh, did you yeah, bring your yeah, kids yeah. to you shows? Bring, yeah. Did you ever bring your bring kids them to, to shows? shows? Yeah. My kids, because I would never, I was so cheap, I couldn't get babysitters. I was so mm -hmm. broke, I couldn't get babysitters. So I always brought them into the green room. Always brought them in the green room. I mean, this is like from the time they were six months old. And I would always get, you know, one of the waitresses would hold the baby while I went and did my set, and then I'd leave, right? And Isaac, my son, he was maybe about three years old. He he would hear stuff. I mean, they hear like the worst language, you know, they hear, they hear, fuck, yeah. fuck, shit, damn, mother, you know, all this stuff. Right. And one time Isaac got really mad at me and he said, fuck, fuck, fuck. Right. <laughs> and, and he's three years old. And I said, Isaac, you can't say that. You can't, I mean, he was, he was more like five years old. Okay. So yeah, I said, you can't say that. You can't, he said, well, you say it on stage and everybody else says it on stage. And I was working, I think I was working at Acme that night. And we, he used to be able to do the mic check, right? And Aww. I said, those words are okay if you're on stage. <laughs> and whoever was running the board at Acme, <laughs> right, would always say, do, they, do the kids want to do the mic check? You know, because they'd turn it on before the show, right? <laughs> and so absolutely without, no one, no one did this. So I said, okay, Isaac, you can go. Can I do it? Can I do it? Because it's a thrill to talk in the microphone, right? Isaac runs out goes into the microphone, five years old, and he says, how are all you motherfuckers doing? <laughs> <laughs> that oh was it. God. That was it. And wow. now... Yeah, he turned out all right. And now he's, he's in jail. Yeah. No, he's not in jail. Now he he's out, successful. He he's in L.A., right? He's, he is in L.A. Okay. The kids are in L.A. I am such an empty nester. My kids are gone. And you're an empty nester, too. Well, right? I have adult. one around. You do? Oh, yes. I have it's one a boomerang? Around. It's, it is a boomerang. You got a boomerang. It's, yeah, yeah. And this is the kid that, this is the young one. Um, he, you know... When we tried to be Christians for a while, we went to my aunt's house, who's who's not Christian. Um, what is and, she? She's Jewish. She's some kind of and, pagan. Um, and so we go there, and um, and she says, "I want to hear you pray," because you know I told her that we were going to the Methodist church, and and he started to pray, and he said, "You know, I want to thank." I want to thank you for the cottage cheese. I want to thank you for the potato <laughs> bread. And I want to thank you for my penis. And, um, <laughs> and I just remember, like, taking him by the scruff of the neck into the other room. And he's like, what? I I'm happy I have one. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> and, what, what, Mom? I and, say this all the time you know at home what? and you don't and do that. And they're really <laughs> proud of it. They should be. Yeah, they should they're be. They're really yeah. proud oh, yeah. of it. What is that? An extra twenty five cents My an hour? God. Yeah. Just it's, their, yeah. it's their first and favorite toy. Yes, always. it is. Yeah. Yes. You ever that yeah. you hear that great line that Willie Nelson said? He just had a birthday. 
And somebody said, how does it feel? To, he's like 82. Can't remember. Can't remember. Totally paraphrasing. He said, how does it feel to be 82? And he said, well, I outlived my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Which... <laughs> Which is kind of like, you go, wow, is that a good thing? Is that a good thing? I don't know. He's I don't feeling know if I good. I'll live my care. vagina. I'm not sure if I want to do that. He's high. Yeah, he's high. He's high. <laughs> well, and pot is legal now, right? Every place. So, and he must need Except something here. from It's not medicine. legal, legal. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah, just if you yeah. need, you know, if you I have mean, a condition. I mean, if you have glaucoma. If you have a condition. Yeah. So many I, people I could, have glaucoma I could, now. Yeah. It is. I could get it. Lots I could get glaucoma. it. And they're driving and texting with glaucoma. Yes. It's just amazing. Yes. <laughs> yes. And they're hitchhiking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they, well, don't they only let you get it in pill form or something? Oh, uh, I think so. Does it yeah. give you the same effect? Uh, have you, know? Are you saying you don't know? I don't yeah. know. Haven't you ever eaten pot? Yeah. I mean, in an edible? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but not it's in a pill form. It's got to be the same form. thing. Yeah. No, I think but it's But like different. a brownie? Do you oh, eat a brownie? No, no I would, I would gummy? never have done that because I just did Chablis. Because if you were going to, you know, because if you could, that would have made you a bad girl if you like ate drugs. I should say here, <laughs> it, the three of us are so, uh, Boston sober, Suzanne sober, I'm sober, Karen yeah. J's not sober. I'm <laughs> drinking a Coors Light. And we're okay She is with drinking that. a Coors Light. All That's, three of us have volunteered but I'm the not driver. An, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. No. <gasps> We're not saying you Look, are. Look, but please, have hey. fun. saying it's weird that hey. you have to do okay. that while you work. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fine. You know, and so you, never you know, we'll volunteer to bring no, you to a I'm meeting. Bron- I'm very bronchial. <laughs> I could never smoke. I mean, I, I lit up half a Marlboro <laughs> to try to be cool with the other camp counselors, and they begged me to quit. I mean, this is a true story. My sister will validate this. She's a chain smoker to this day. And she says, and then when everyone was smoking pot, they're like, don't invite her. Give her the wine. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, I was ostracized what is but for, for my own good. What do you mean you're bronchial? Bronchial, you know. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, yeah, like Jack Plugman? No, yeah, kind of like Jack oh. Plugman. No, I just cough really easily. Okay. You know, you know, cats throw that- up, I cough. I mean, it's just a real... <laughs> you get hairballs. Yeah, it's really that bad. So you never smoke pot. So, never? I no, I didn't. Boston Seriously. never smoked pot. What no. about acid? Come on. You've seen this personality. Why Who here would has we done mess acid? With Who here has done acid? Raise your hand. Uh, I wouldn't have known yeah. where to find it. Seriously. They the would have been The only one who's me. done acid is Come Suzanne. On. I've never done it. Oh, no. You no, I all never have did. done it. No, I haven't. No, done seriously. It. It, it, it's, it's just because I, I mean, I was like such a dweeb. Honest to God. They saw me coming and they're like, Oh, God, nerd child, leave her alone. Oh, God. She couldn't even smoke a Marlboro. Why are we going to sell this to her, you know? I was, uh, last time I did acid, I was in the bathroom at Hauser's house with my friend Marsha, and she was convinced that the Mona Lisa shower curtain <laughs> was talking to her. And, and I guess... It probably was. Yeah, I think it was. I, I really do. See, like, de- dead sober, I would have thought that shower yeah, curtain yeah, was talking to me. Yeah, probably would have. What I like about what Suzanne just said is that she said the last time I did acid. Right. It wasn't the, well, when I did it, it was I, like the last time I did it. I thought maybe it was last weekend. I was hopeful for this one. This is. And you've never done it, Karen. No. Day. The only thing I've ever done is pot. That's wow. it. Pot and alcohol. Right. Same here. Yeah. yeah. Same here. Pot and alcohol. Yeah. That's it. But I, uh, so I've, I've made pot brownies i had a friend that had um that had throat cancer and he was a big pot smoker and he used to get the best stuff and he said and i i smoked pot when i was in high school then i quit i quit before because i was just done with it i was i was just super done with it and super done with that crowd and it was you know nothing nothing against the crowd it was just like it it robbed me of my ambition and I started getting ambitious right about at 17, 18 years old. I wanted to be a comic, and, and I just wanted uh, to be able to go after that. And that was more of a drinking crowd. Uh, for, uh, for, am I wrong on that? No, I mean, you're not more... wrong. I think, that, I think it, mm-hmm. that it really was. I mean, we had a lot of opportunities to, you know, to drink. Two drink minimum. I can't right? even believe I'm talking about this. But right. You I had don't a two know. drink minimum. It's yeah. more like 50-50, like both. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so I I had just I had just kind of gotten out of that. But then when I was 30 years old, I thought um, I was waitressing, and and somebody was uh, I thought, why are all these kids kids? They're all like in their mid 20s. They're five years younger than I thought. Why are they so happy doing side work at the end of the night? <laughs> it's because they all cut out and smoke pot in the alley, and they could roll silverware like like nobody's business because they were all baked. And I thought, that's it. I'm going to get high with the kids. And then I loved it. You only need right now the pot is so strong. You need one toke. That's it. 
Yeah. And then you're you're absolutely out of this world. And so then I thought, oh, this is great. I loved it at work, and then I bought some. It's also super expensive now. I bought some, and I tried to smoke, and then, un- unfortunately, my kids came home. <laughs> you don't know the kind of paranoia. Being high in front of your kids. Have you ever been high in front of your kids? No. Oh, my God. No, that was it. And then I ended up giving the pot away. That was it. I, I was like, I got super Who'd you paranoid. give it to? I can't. I think I gave it to one of the kids. I think I just said, you know what? This is this is not good. Not my kids. I, oh, Jesus one Christ. One of the kids. <laughs> were, I didn't give it to my kid. Here. Your mom doesn't like this. Maybe like it's a pair just of stick shoes. Stick it in the oatmeal for breakfast or something. Yeah. Stir that in. It's no. the brown sugar. It's no. beautiful. But I, I learned how to make pot brownies for my friend that had throat cancer. And then I ended up making all these pot brownies for people that wanted they found you became you become the baker right yeah right you become the baker because you know how to have it so have you ever eaten pot in the in an edible yeah. yeah yeah what did you eat a brownie a brownie that, yeah that we made okay oh. so you know well i didn't make my actually my son and and the mexican made it the me, who's the mexican <laughs> you know no i the don't man, know the one who does my lawn <laughs> So that's really it's true. It's your boyfriend, right? Uh-huh. The one who does my... For now, he's my boyfriend. For now, he's your boyfriend. Right. He's on probation. Okay, so you're living in sin. Yes. You're living in sin. Boston, you're married, right? Yeah, yeah. You're married. And Suzanne, yeah. you're... What are you? Well, I'm married, but I haven't lived with my husband for 10 years. Really? really? Yeah. How'd you get that deal? Yeah, it's a that nice seems, deal. That seems... It's a nice deal. <laughs> is he, I like is it. he in the state of Minnesota? Yeah. Do you have to go visit? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's eight miles away. Yeah. It's... We see each other on Sunday instead of church. Well, that sounds that's, like the perfect marriage. It time. sounds like a custody arrangement. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's, just, it's a good thing. It's a really good thing. I mean, if you're talking about marriage, I mean, like marriage yeah. isn't that great, but like, yeah. if you're going to be married. He's happy. I married an audience member. What can I tell you? Did I'm you just really? a slut. Did you? You married oh, an yeah. audience he member? Ca- um, yeah. My husband came to see someone else, uh, a headliner. I won't mention a name, Liz Winstead. And anyway, she... Um, <laughs> She, is she funny? She's, she was very funny that night. I, okay. I, she killed me laughing because she told me after the show, she says, hey, there's this guy I want you to meet. Um, he wants to meet you, and he's drunk, and um, you don't have to meet him. But I went to school with him. We were in science class together, and I said, well, I'm fascinated, Liz, uh, because you're the famous one, and I'm just this rookie, you know. So I met him, and I said, um, okay, well, you're drunk. If you can remember me, you know, maybe we'll go out. So he gives me his deposit slip because, you know, back in the old days, there's no... Back in the old days, people carried checkbooks with them. Yeah, it was weird. He had a checkbook. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I just carried cash because I was waitressing on the side, you know, because comedy was lucrative. Anyways, that's how I met my husband. And the next day, he sent me red roses. And that was really sweet. And he said, we'll go out in a week. I'll call you. Love, Scott. And then this other guy got jealous. He sent me roses. And then I got another bunch of roses. I thought I was never going to see him. I thought I was going to a funeral. And, um, and then we were both drinking at the time. And I said, well, i got to get sober and dump four guys. I'll call you in about six months. And I called him in six months, and we've been together ever since. So. Oh, my God. Wow. It's just so good. It's a, it's a little – I knew I needed That's a rehab, tearjerker. So, yeah. It's cute. He'd probably like to be a guest on the show if Colleen's going to make more cupcakes. I just wanted to tell you. That I, I am all over the road here, huh? <laughs> but anyways, that's, you know, but I was a fossil when I got married. That's how we figure it worked. Plus, he's young. Rob the cr- cradle woman. That's the only way to go. How much younger is he? Grant, remember, older woman. I should anyways. say here, Grant, we have a, a guy operating our board. So there is. Oh, there I'm is so a, sorry. I no, involved no, there's him a man now. in the room. You know. Actually, he looks a little bit like Bradley Cooper girls, don't you think? Yeah, he you, does. You see the Bradley Cooper yeah. does. I don't I know. Think, I Let think me take better another looking. swig of my Coors Light first. Yeah, he's kind of hot. Please, drink, and, drink up, And Karen he said, the, the, I came into the room, and he said, whatever you need, I'll do. So he's Grant the handyman. And the handyman. Uh, the hand- <laughs> <laughs> this is what I get for showing up late. Mm-hmm. I, I missed all the, you know. The fun there stuff. He yeah, he's pretty attractive. Okay. All right. So this is the neighbor ladies. When we come back, we're going to talk about how neighbors are important uh, to your health. You're listening to the neighbor ladies. And your neighbor lady, Boston. Yeah, I married um, a Lutheran, and I'm a Jewish Methodist Bostonian, so I'm kind of stuck here. But I love you guys. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you Minnesotans, Aww. you neighbors. And your, bu- and your neighbor lady, Karen J. Well, I'm Asian, but I have put on some weight lately. So believe it or not, some people actually guess Mexican. <laughs> 
and your neighbor lady, Colleen. Hi. Uh, I still haven't figured out what I'm doing here yet. We'll figure it out in a little bit. And your neighbor lady, Susan. No, it's Suzanne. 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 There you go. Yeah, you're so cute. Um, I'm on antibiotics. Is okay. there a is, is there, there an reason? STD involved I with just, this? Uh... It's kind of a personal question, Karen. Oh, oh, see. Boston. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. See, look at what you started. We're still getting to know each other. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. So, okay, uh, welcome back. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies, po- new podcast here in the Twin Cities. Uh, we've got Boston, Karen J., Suzanne, and me, Colleen Cruz. And our topic right now is um, neighbors, good neighbors, uh, can actually um, increase your health and well-being. A new survey shows how few people feel closely connected with their neighbors and uh how that's affecting their health. Suburbanites, as compared to urban and rural dwellers, are most certain of their access to community resources. They also care least about their neighbors. Is that true? Now, there's only, there's like, Boston, you live in the suburbs, right? I live in the suburbs. I have, you know, I have so many neighbors. And um, the truth of the matter is that in the winter, we only see each other at the mailboxes. But because of social media, we are connected by Facebook. And we ha- kind of have boundaries, you know. I mean, we don't get too involved in each other's lives, but we know what's going on. All right. And you're inner city. I'm inner city. I used to live in Edina, though. Okay. So you've, you've had the both, both experiences, yep. Edina and inner city. Where do you live? Well, I'm, I'm in the suburbs now. Really? Yeah. I'm in New Brighton. Oh. Yeah. That's Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's like chic. a perm. That's yeah, chic. It is. Yeah. It's, I don't know my neighbors. You don't know your neighbors at all, but have you been have you been there at all? Uh, yeah, I've been there since oh twenty years. I mean, I sort of know them. I don't know their last names. Let's put it that way. And I get Kathy and Craig confused every now and then because they look alike. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, in. This article that we have here from the the Atlantic, it uh, it states that uh, you know obviously having connections with your neighbors will increase your health and well being. But I think increasingly we are disconnected, right? I agree. We yeah, are. definitely. Ever since the definitely. advent of the garage door opener, in the fact, you know, ah. we don't. What's what keeps us? I mean, in the old days, everybody had a big front porch. You right. know, you hung out on it. I don't know if you guys well, remember the front porch, but. People hung out in the front. They all hang out in the backyard, you know? And in the old days, you didn't have to lock your doors at night. Yeah, right. That's true. Well, in Boston, we always locked our doors, but, you know, that's a whole other story. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, we we had the mafia. Our, we always, I'm from the east side of St. Paul. Hold okay. your applause. And we always locked our doors, too. And we, but we hung out. We, we definitely, when I was a kid, we hung out in the alleyways. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that was yeah. like we where that, that was yeah. the alleyway is where all the kids yeah. congregated. Mm-hmm. We played. That's where we played ditch. That's where we played kick the can. That's where we played. We didn't play stickball. We played kickball. Yeah. You know, we we try to find a dead end where we could where we could really kick the ball. You know, now I don't really see it. And I I'm in South Minneapolis, kind of in uptown, and the kids there are either from young young parents so they're they're having play dates at the park there's mm-hmm. nobody running through the tearing through the neighborhood screaming right yeah like there used to be and i have I, but i live in a duplex so i i know my neighbors upstairs obviously because i rent from them but i don't know anybody on either side and that kind of bums me out I, it's been a while like when i was married i knew my neighbors a little bit but mm, not i never i never got to i i kind of i kind of feel bad i never got to to have that uh, relationship where you have dinner. I only had that relationship with one family, with one couple, where we had dinner on Sundays sometimes. Every once in a while we'd go shopping together. But uh, I definitely felt good about that. You know, I felt like we, uh, there was somebody who had my back, right? Like we were pack yeah. animals, yeah. Yeah. you know? Don't you think, though, that um, when your kids were little, you, you knew your neighbors a little bit more? Yeah, I, I did. I mean, yeah, I, I think mine. I, I did because... For a lo- for a long time, I was a single parent, so you know we would do 
swaps of childcare, you mm -hmm. know, and and you just sort of got to know the other single women in the neighborhood, and and so it's a, a necessity thing. Well, I think it was a necessity thing, but it was also um, a real trust thing. I think we really trusted each other. Well, we trusted each other. To take care of your kids. Exactly. Yeah, right. I think exactly. that's so important. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, I just wanted to chime in. I joke about going to the mailbox and seeing the neighbors yeah. every once in a while. We we're actually pretty tight in our little hood. We have uh, we call ourselves the transplants. On the corner, we have my friend from Thailand, and she's married to a guy from St. Louis Park, so she can't leave here either because she's married to a native. And then on the other side of me, Bob from um, Fairhaven, Massachusetts, he's married to Sarah, and she's a native, so she can't, you know, they can't leave. And that we all have kids about the same age, and I think yeah. that's why we're tight. And we've been right. there 15 years, so we're like old timers in the hood, you know. And then down the street, there's everybody else from the bus stop. So we've gotten to know these guys. And we're pretty tight. But we, the, the funny thing is we're all transplants, and I think that's why we stay together, because we're not uh, passive-aggressive, which is a whole – we could have two hours just on that. You're but, saying you're East Coast transplant. Yeah, right? yeah. And, 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 and you're saying all, that we're – the you got, you guys, the, some of the natives are a little passive-aggressive. Oh, they definitely you know, are, and for it's, sure. And, it's, um, and, and we're tight over there. Um, I don't know. I felt – I'll just give you an example of where, where we formed a union um, – Okay, for 72 hours, I don't care if you shoot off fireworks on the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. But on the morning of the 6th, I say take a, re a rest. And I don't call the police. I just go out in my backyard with my Nerf gun, and I just start, you know, shooting at the kids going, hey, man, I'm going to call the police next. And I'm not alone when I go. There are other neighbors. So it's a little exciting. But, You're not really kidding you know, when you say Nerf gun. You really shoot the kids with a Nerf gun, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's sponge. It gets the point across because kids don't listen to you. You just want to, you know, you know. They you got to get their attention. Sure. And when they're shooting bottle rockets right at your patio window for the third year in a row, you need to take action. There is no such thing as Nerf guns aggressive. can be very dangerous, however. Yeah. Oh, what's that? I got shot in the eye with a Nerf gun by my youngest son, and I had to get steroids. Really? Oh, my God. Yeah, not antibiotics. Steroids. Eye pain is the worst. You had to get oh, yeah. steroids oh. because you were shot in the eye with a yes. Nerf gun? Yes. Steroid even... drops. They were all milky. I aim, I aim for yeah. the kneecaps. I, I, didn't, I didn't go for the eyeball. Right Good for, for you. <laughs> it's very Tony That was Soprano thoughtful. Yeah, it was. I thought a lot about it, you know. <laughs> Well, this is interesting. So have you ever, okay, so you're, you're talking about neighborhood politics. Oh, yeah. In the yeah. relationships with, that you have with your neighbors. Do you have any, do you have anything like that? Do you, do you know your neighbors at all, Karen? I do. Yeah? But, and before I moved to Ribbitville, Frogtown, I lived in Midway, which is right next door. Uh -huh. And I had the best neighbors I've ever had. Like we all, so great? we all knew each other. Mm -hmm. Like the day I moved into the neighborhood, okay, I was the only non-white person. So they all came over one by one, introduced themselves, <laughs> tried to, like, give me suggestions, like the best, you know, Asian food restaurants. I'm not kidding. That's... <laughs> um, they wanted to know what, how I got my money, and <laughs> I'm serious. And what like was how my... you got your money? Yeah, and, you know, how, I made, what, how did I make money, or right. how did I get my money, how do I pay my bills? <laughs> and then they wanted to know um, where I stood politically. Because they're very liberal, which is good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am too. But they didn't believe me because I came in from Edina, so they assumed I was Republican. And I'm like, hello, I'm not white. No, no, that would be Apple Valley, Minnesota. But we, right. we don't have time for We politics. love people in Apple Valley. We do love Apple <laughs> we Valley. We love it's Apple pretty, Valley. It's but, a great time. But we would get together all the time and have like bonfires and stuff like that yeah. or dinner parties. And it was great. And how long did you live in, the, in there? Are you still friends with them? I am. Yeah, Would you I mean, rate your cool. quality of life as higher? Oh, having, for sure. Because the, the, the house I was renting was crap. But the neighbors were just made it great. Yeah. 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 And the only, reason I, the only reason I left was because the owner came back from like, um, she was like, an, I don't know, Bahamas or something. She decided to come back and yeah, because why would you want to leave this? Well, she got fired from her job or oh. something. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I understand. But, but well, no. And then, that, and now I live in, Frogtown, which is a little more sketchy, but it's a, you know, they're doing the whole gentrification thing. And so my next door neighbors are Hmong. Mm -hmm. They're the first Hmong people I've ever actually gotten to know. Because I, I used to kind of make fun of Hmongs, you know, just in my act and stuff. Yeah. Because they're kind of, you know, whatever. They're just different. <laughs> <laughs> 
but they, <laughs> but now, what are you talking about? I don't know, but now they're like, do you feel now you're, uh, what are you, are you Korean? I'm Korean. You're Korean. And so like, well, they're just different. Like, well, what like, do you mean? like they're just different. You know how like, <laughs> like that's like me saying, okay, well, I don't like Finnish people because they're just different. You know, well, okay. The thing for me was I'm Irish German. I was a, a Korean adoptee. So okay. like whenever I was in, when I was in college at the U, I'd walk past the Asian American Student Center, mm -hmm. and they'd all look at me like, Why "You're not you like there? us, okay?" Because they were like, you know, fobs or whatever, What's fresh fob? off the boat. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Oh. So they could tell I was different. They, like you're white. You're but how white would they know? How would they, they know? Could, because I didn't look like them, and I didn't talk like them. Wow. You know. Mm. Oh, because you don't have the like, you don't have the accent. Well, that, and right. I think that you can just tell because if you've been around, like you know, yeah. Um, like when I met them and and I started partying with them because they mungs love to party a lot, <laughs> like and and it's in their culture if they offer you liquor you can't say no it's really disrespectful I can't go over there then yeah I, I know either yeah. no, you seriously need, they yeah we remember, if we have some mung guests you got to take care of that for us all right fine yeah. and then <laughs> you have to drink all of the they, so they the younger ones the ones that were like you know in their early twenties or late teens or whatever they they were like hanging out with me and they were like you know. I know my mom said you're adopted, but like you actually seem pretty cool. Most of them are really standoffish towards their kind, mm -hmm. is what yeah. they said. Because they were like, be "But bizarre. you're not a." They're like, "You're not a real Asian, but you're pretty cool because you're open-minded." The only time I ever had any experience like that, I was I did a Canadian comedy special, and it was in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and this is in 1993, yeah. which is now Morgan Freeman has Clarksdale, Mississippi, is where the crossroads are where. You know, the mythology is that Robert, that's where Robert Johnson sold his soul, right, to the devil to become the greatest blues man. So the idea was, um, and it was for the Canadian Broadcast Network, The idea, and it was Rich Hall. Do you guys remember Rich Hall from Fridays? And uh, he was, he he also did uh, not necessary HBO's not necessarily oh, right, right, right. Yep, yep. okay so it was his Coming it was back. his comedy special and the idea was he would take he would pick comedians and he would put them as a fish out of water right so this is why I was in Clarksdale I found myself in Clarksdale Mississippi because blonde hair blue eyed I'm I'm pretty white I'm as white as you get right um, and he put me into this blues community okay and I sang in a band which i'm not really a singer i sang in a band and i became uh, a blues woman right and for i mean it's ridiculous in 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 a one week so i got to spend a week in clarksdale mississippi and i was quite literally i believe at the time the only white woman in clarksdale mississippi and so for five days i had this experience of being different so and you were the minority. I was, yeah, but that's... like different, and yeah. and to to an extent that I thought, okay, this is this is only a glimpse of what it's like. Yeah, this is this is not even. I mean, this five days. Can you imagine a year? Can you imagine two years? Can you imagine people being uh, automatically suspicious of you? People weren't automatically suspicious of me because. Uh, you know, here's here's the the whiteness that I don't know about. You know, or here's my um, white privilege. My white mm -hmm. privilege, right? And, and I was thinking about that. I thought, gee, you know, I mean, all of these ideas crashing around my brain all at once. People would look at me like kids would stop talking on the street and stare at me as though I were the. I should have been wearing a spacesuit, like. Hello, kids! Like I was a <laughs> somebody from another planet, right? And yeah. I don't know. It's because they haven't seen a white person live. Seriously, like yeah. it was. It was that. I mean, we wow. had a black um, a black uh, camera crew too. It was just me. So I thought this is amazing. This is first of all, I'm, I'm I will forever be grateful for that experience because it just it let me it let me know that um, that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When yeah. I when so when somebody tells me, you know, this is this is what this this is like for me. I always try to filter it through that experience, right? Because as a white person, you won't know. <laughs> and that's and that's the most that's the best you can you can hope for is that you won't know, right? I don't know what it would be like to be uh, not fresh off the boat, right? Right, and to have physical uh, or physical similarities, but not like how would they note your differences, right? I know it's, and, it's crazy, but then we do know, you know, uh -huh. I do too. 
Yeah. But like I but I'm okay with it. I mean, well, of course, you know. I mean, we this is the this is the this is the idea of America, right? This is the mm-hmm. melting pot. This is what we should be doing. We should be having conversations about this and we should be intermeshing and and figuring out friendships and relationships and how our cultures combine. You know what a good way to do that is? Hosting a potluck. Yeah. Yeah. That's I have this list of how to uh how to organize uh, how to break down the barriers in how to your break own down, neighborhood how to break down what do you like to bring to a potluck what do i like to bring to a potluck mm-hmm. i always i try to be the chip person the chip person <laughs> mm-hmm. you, you don't want to be the jello person for some <laughs> reason <laughs> i thought brownies Jell-O. yeah, yeah. <laughs> brownies man now that would be the great equalizer wouldn't it yeah that would be like well, because I'm thinking they wouldn't be normal brownies. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You don't have to eat them, but you can still bake them. I can't even tell you how many times I got hammered at different neighborhood functions because I was just automatically uncomfortable in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. Really? So I thought, I'm just going to make this. Yeah, I'm socially awkward. So, I mean, I try well, not to. Isn't the I don't think. I, well, you hide it well. I Yeah. There's, there's. A, You're still socially awkward now. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am very socially awkward, and I, and I, and I freak out. If then I must too, be too, but I just don't know. There's it. so much, too much socializing <laughs> going on, and I used to drink, and I would drink to mask it to become more, to b- become more outgoing and right. more social, and um, and then I would overshare. <laughs> and oh, I oversharing do that. is a is a bonus in radio and in comedy. Yes. So yeah. I, you you find these things where you can overshare. Oh yeah, but, that's yeah. why we feel normal, huh? Yep. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We. It's a. It's a. It's an area we can overshare, and everybody just expects it. You know. I think the term for those of us that have social awkwardness. What is it now? The the uh, the big term doctors use is general anxiety disorder. GAD. We have GAD. Generalized Gen- anxiety disorder. General anxiety disorder. Those of us that are socially awkward. That's what they. You they know. should just call them comics. I know. They really superstars. Yeah. Right. The superstars. All right. <laughs> this is a good talk. Are you thinking it's a good talk? I think it's a good talk. Yeah, I think, I think it's a good talk. Let's I'm wrap some it up. ideas. Okay. When we come back, we're going to do our new segment, because everything's a new segment, right? Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to do our, our uh, lady business segment. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Boston. Oh, okay. Uh, my favorite food is lobster. Really? They're scary. They are, but you kill them first. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you see that Woody Allen movie? <laughs> yeah. Annie Hall. That's right. That's where I learned to cook. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. Well, I guess if we're talking about favorite foods, I would have to say mine is uh, steak. I like the meat. Kind of, kind of raw. Also, I love chocolate-covered strawberries. And depending on the day, maybe a good hard cucumber. <laughs> that's that's very that's that's uh, I like it. A good hard cucumber. You know, fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Meet your neighbor, lady Colleen. Going on that cucumber thing, I, you know, if I had to masturbate with a piece of, with a vegetable, I think a zucchini would be nice. I'm yeah, not saying I've done it. I'm, not, I'm just saying it's an option. Pesticide alert. Organic. Organic. Oh, okay. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. I like color coordinated food. I, um, you know, if I'm if I'm gonna have corn, I want to have some color that's gonna complement that yellow. Welcome back. You're listening to the Neighbor Ladies. It's our new podcast. Boston, Karen, J, Suzanne, and me, Colleen. Speaking of food, really quick, we're going to go on to our our next topic here, but um, speaking of food here, um, you, you were saying that, Suzanne, you were saying that you like, uh, that you like color coordinated food. And earlier in the hour, you were talking about your, your child who was trying to pray and who said, thank you for the, the cottage cheese and thank you for the potato bread. And I thought, those are both the same color. (laughs) That's the first thing I thought. And I then thought, she, 
thank you for my penis. What comes out of the penis that's also the same color? Oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I hadn't gone there yet, but Karen J., thanks for taking me I like there. It. I think we figured it out. <laughs> Karen's going to take us to places that we probably should go. Every once in a while. I was thinking of chocolate I'm, eclairs, but I you like know. It. That's my favorite. <laughs> I love I those, I forgot man. about saying that. Oh, chocolate eclairs. Do you guys know who Caitlin Stacy is? Yes. You do? Who is she? I have no idea who she is. Oh, wait. Isn't she the one that we read the article about? We, we did read the article about her. She's some kind of actress, and she's on a CW show. I don't even know who she is. Um, and also my link's not working. So, so. what's going on She's with a this feminist. chick? She's yeah. a feminist. Well, okay. Does anybody have the link? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this link up, but she's an actress on a CW show and she, uh, was going to be posing that she was going to have a cover, a magazine article, right? Yes. Let's, let's say this right, over. Right. Caitlin Stacy is an actress on a CW show. Right. And she was going to be the subject of of an article and she was going to get a cover on this magazine. I can't even, because I don't have the article. I can't, I can't, uh, I'm trying to get I can't back pull to it up. Yeah. So now, I gotta get back. so now, so now, so now, Oh, this is the same thing I have. Thank you. Oh, Karen okay. J. <laughs> <laughs> so you, here's the thing they put, they pulled. Oh, here it is. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Suzanne. Yeah. We're very, very professional here. Okay, so she's been on some show called Neighbor. She's been on uh, some show called Rain. I don't even know. Here's the problem with me in, in pop culture. I have no idea who anybody is anymore. I don't have network television, and I don't kind of. I kind of don't give a shit. I like what I like, and I don't want to watch the Kardashians, and I don't want to watch the Real Housewives. But I come across articles about people that seem vaguely interesting to me. And yeah. what I liked about this article about this woman is she says. Uh, so I was going to get this magazine cover, and, uh, and then they, they, they pulled it because right. she wouldn't pose nude right. for the cover, right? And, and, beca and because on her website, she is nude, but it's more of an artistic nude, and they wanted her to be more provocative, sexy. She's nude, nude on her website? About it. Yes. And they lied about it. Yeah. Caitlin Stacy added that she was under the impression that the feature was a story about me and about my work and about my worldview. And that she would not allow uh, this magazine or its editors to proceed with designing my message and using my body as a prop to incite interest and circulation. Dun, dun, dun. Right. So they right. wanted to take her, what she does on her website, and basically sexualize it to get more. I see. Okay. And it's some magazine called Good Weekend Magazine, right? Yeah. Um, which doesn't sound like a particularly sexy magazine. Right. I don't know. Even though A Nice Weekend might include sex, Good Weekend magazine. Yeah, it's more <laughs> like, like I, think, I think the website was more like, here's these women who are just free and they're happy with their bodies. And they're not like terribly sexy, except for maybe her. Mm -hmm. But like all the other women are just like average women, you know? Okay, that's her, that's her website. That's yeah. her idea. of being. A, so she's posed nude before. Yes. And she just didn't want them to use it. But on her terms. But on her terms. Okay. Meaning like... Right. Hi, I'm free with my body. I'm, I, you know what I mean? Like she's a real feminist. I like that she, she called is. the guy on it. She, she did call the guy on it. And she, you know, like she said that while no woman should ever have to justify her desire to stay clothed, it's imperative that we recognize the distinction between empowerment and objectification. And I think that was her, her main point. Right. It, um, if she chooses to do that, it's one thing, but for somebody to make the assumption that that's what she was going to do because that's what she's done on her own free will was, um, was what really, you know, gave her a bad taste in her mouth. We yeah. have to be careful using those terms. <laughs> Gave her a bit. I don't know. We do. We don't have to be careful using any terms. Oh. I don't know. Like I was just. That's what she said. Bad taste <laughs> in your mouth. I know. I know. I okay. Let, let, let's just go back to the name of the magazine that was going to put the nude photo on. Good weekend. Good weekend. Right. Yeah. I. I just. Um, wow. I, I. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It just. You know. Because it sounds like a like the good weekend. They like could be barbecuing. Or they something. could be. They could be having 
you know, an article about croquet. I'm guessing she yeah. wasn't going to be nude, nude. I mean, think of people, women who have been nude on magazine covers before. Demi Moore comes to mind just because she was, for a while there, she was doing one every year, right, for Vanity Fair. Oh, she did a yeah. pregnant yeah. one, and then she did the one the year after where she was body painted in the suit. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she did another one after that. And then when they do the actresses, don't they, when they do, when Vanity Fair, Vanity Fair does a lot of nude covers, don't they? Because mm-hmm. didn't they do... Um, I know that Seth Rogen and uh, James Franco did a did a goof on it where it was the young actresses and then they did the young actors where their their naughty bits are artfully yes. hidden yes. but their fat wasn't which was kind of funny. Yeah. Um but then when you think about it, okay, so I was just reading this this article today, Monica Bellucci. I think that's how you say her name. I'm not sure. She was in this great movie Shoot 'em Up. I, I whatever. She's going to be the new Bond lady, right? the new Bond girl. She's 50 right. years old. She's three years older than Daniel Craig. Wow. Which is, I know. Awesome, That right? is awesome. It's totally awesome. And she's hot. She's super duper hot. Um, so that is still a requirement of being a Bond woman, which is fine. Because yeah. being fit and hot is a requirement of being a Bond. And she's wicked old compared with <laughs> a lot of... Well, in, you know. in Hollywood, yeah. Yeah, by Hollywood <laughs> terms, man, she's a fossil. You go, right. baby. You right. go. What did, okay, is it the... Meryl Streep, when she turned 40, got uh, offered three witch roles <laughs> yeah. in the same year, like yeah. three. You Witches can with witch. clothes on. And, yeah. You know, that was... <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But now, I mean, she's, she's done three romantic comedies in the last four years. She's done three romantic comedies. She's going to play a rock star in her upcoming movie that's penned by uh, Minneapolitan um, transplant Di- Diablo Cody. But... When I was thinking about this Monica Bellucci thing, right, in in relation to this uh, Caitlin, what's her face? I don't even know what her name is. The woman that wouldn't pose nude on the magazine that we're talking right. about. Caitlin Stacy. Caitlin yeah. Stacy. Um, women only have a certain amount of time to make money in Hollywood, right? You 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 peak. Somebody did this uh, study. You peak at thirty four years old. Seriously, in Hollywood, that's that's yeah. that's your peak earning time when you're 34, and after that, it starts to decline if you're an actress. And when you think about that, okay, do you use it if you got it? Question mark. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying she should have done it because I don't think she should have done it. I don't think anybody should spring a nude cover on you, right? Mm-hmm. But I think it happens more often than it doesn't, and I think that that perhaps the people in charge. Um, like this guy that sprung the nude cover on her could be thinking, well, you know, I, I, I might have her where I want her because she knows she has to maximize her exposure, so to speak. Before. How old is she? Does it say? She, she couldn't be more than 35. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't I don't think, think she so. doesn't, she doesn't look yeah. more yeah. than 35. Late 20s? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you see what I mean? But yeah. if you're thinking about that, if you're if you're somebody in your late twenties and this is your business and you know that you, yeah. you know that statistic and you think, okay, well, you know, it would be a hard thing to turn down. Yeah. Somebody said to me the other day, Oh, I hope Amy Schumer, comedian Amy Schumer, doesn't get overexposed like Will Farrell did. Right? Because Will Farrell for a while there was doing everything that was offered to him. I thought he yeah. was Christmas. For a while there, the elf. I really did. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I hated I just, that movie. <laughs> yeah. well, well, but you know, he said he said yes to everything. And yeah. then I was thinking, mm-hmm. you know what? If I was Amy Schumer, I'd say yes to everything too, because you never know when it's gonna end. But True. but let's look at the I mean, when women, thirty four is the age. I think guys have an extended period. They do, they have seventeen years more. Yeah. They get to they get to go. So I mean I think it's when women look thirty four though. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I guess well, so. Yeah. I don't know. Monica Bellucci doesn't look like she's 34. She looks she yeah. looks hot, but she definitely looks yeah. older than 40. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. So, she's got but a I, but bit I do think baggage. that it, she I could do look think it's 14. What you can pull off yeah. what you look. If you no, look younger than your age, you know, then I think that counts. So, are you guys all for a woman using her sexuality to get ahead while she can? If she wants yeah, to. Only no, if but she wants to. I'm having this thought that and I'm and I'm segueing back to something. Well, I'm not really segueing. I'm interrupting you guys. And I just had this really cool thought that if 34 is the age, and then you're dead in Hollywood for women, then that means the Kardashians are almost through. <laughs> I mean, it'll just be Kanye. It won't. It won't be Kim. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The world is a beautiful like place in my land. I feel like it's it really starting is. to change. He's got to go too, though. Well, I just think he'll just go because he just has no filter. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Anyways, you had a very serious political question, and I went to 
the Kardashians. No, that's all right. So. What were you saying? Um, I feel like it's starting to change, though. Like, th- the standards for women in Hollywood are changing. And I say that because look at Melissa McCarthy. Look yeah, at right. Fat Amy. It's, look at, it's hopeful. You know what I mean? It's hopeful. Look at a lot of older actresses are really actually getting work. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I, I think it's good news. I think it's okay. Whatever they want to do is okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to see what happens in the next six months because you, to, to a year because you've got a lot of women out there that are over 40 with some pretty big movies coming out. It'll be interesting to see if they, you know, let's see what this movie does Friday with Meryl Streep, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't go see Trainwreck. I felt like a failure to the comedy community because I didn't go out and support I it. I saw it. But you did? Yeah, I did. It How was did you awesome. feel? It was awesome? Okay. It was awesome. Somebody uh, in the city pages... I should quote them. I, uh, uh, whoever did the movie review for the, for the City Pages uh, had a good point, and she said, well, I didn't like it because, um, you know, at the end, she ends up with the guy. And so it's not really a feminist movie because she ends up with the guy, and it shouldn't be that, okay, I need to end up with the guy for my life to be great. It should just be, I'm fine with me. But then it wouldn't be a romantic comedy. I mean, there are plenty of male character dominated movies where they end up with the girl and everything is great. Do you right. see what I mean? No, I, I mean I if it's a romantic saying, yeah. comedy, of course the of course the happy couple is going to end up together. So that was a moot point as far as I was concerned, but the rest of it, all of the jokes fantastic, the sexuality in it very realistic, very fantastic. They have a great conversation about um they're having an argument. It's Bill Amy Schumer, Bill Hader in the movie Trainwreck. They're having a, a, an argument. Their characters are having an argument. And she's talking about him going down on her, right? And she said, no, I don't even like the way you go down on me. He said, what do you, you don't want me to go down on you? And she said, no, I think you're doing it to earn points. And they were having this great <laughs> ar- argument conversation about him going down on her. And I thought, this is, I was laughing. And I thought, why am I laughing so hard? And I thought, because I never hear this in a movie. You never, ever right. hear. Yeah. Right. They about, stop at a certain point. They and sure we never do. get to the What's stuff that we're talking about. What's wrong with a guy about? going down on a woman? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Not as far right. as I'm concerned. In fact, you have to. <laughs> you have to. If you to be w- a real man. Mm-hmm. You do. Oh, yeah. I don't fuck with anyone who doesn't go down there. That's right. No, I'm serious. They need to go downtown. Yeah. Worship the whole body, I say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, both no. parties. Have you ever dated a guy that wouldn't? Yes. Yes. Me Not too, for too for long. two years. What oh, was yeah. wrong with me? Hell no. <laughs> oh my God. Jeez yeah. Louise. He pretended Colleen. that he liked it for maybe six weeks. Mm-hmm. And then he stopped. Yeah. What's up with that? Mm hmm. But yeah. then he still wanted me to visit downtown. Right. And I said no. No so way. I no way. And then right. he didn't. And what the hell were we both doing? Right. Did it you go to rehab after that? My no, God, girl. What a put you right to the edge. I just, I mean, eventually it took me a while to break up with him, but I broke up with yeah, him. Yeah, but you only did two years. I did six. What? Oh six my gosh. years. Did, yeah. you take, did you take a girlfriend at least? You know, and then and his favorite thing to say was. Uh, well, what? Say I, it. Are you scared to say yeah, it? Yeah. Oh my God. Are you chicken? <laughs> Suck my cock. Suck my cock. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Christ. You know, I mean, it's like, how many times? That and is sweet talk. Yeah. If you got to talk about it, if you got to, if you got to give the action, we yeah. ain't got the rest going. You know what What's I'm saying? What's the weirdest thing anybody ever said to you in bed? <laughs> oh, do we change, really the, go there? change the channel. I think that's the weirdest thing. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'll talk to you later. I'm going to the gym. You just told me to change this. And I got up and went to Lifetime. I was so mad. <laughs> Where's mom? Where's mom? She's going out in the car at 4 a.m., Daddy. What did you say to her? True story. I end my case. <laughs> you girls are bringing out the memories, I got to tell you. <laughs> All right. I'm about to go bronchial. Excuse me. Oh, oh, my oh, my God. All right. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk about the problem of the day. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. Meet your neighbor lady, Boston. What do I do for a day job? Oh, 
what I do for work and money. I used to do school lunch, and now I write a few jokes and sell a few shoes. You're a shoe sales lady. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I guess that's what I do. Okay, I like it. I'm an expert in customer service. But enough about me, please. <laughs> so that's how you can smile and say fuck you at the same time. I mean, but not literally. No. no, I really like to take care of the customer. Okay, all right. But we'll talk about that later. Okay. It's not filthy. All right. We won't. Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. Let's see. What do I do for work? Well, the state of Minnesota pays me to stay home during the day. I like it. It's true. Not that I'm crazy or anything. I'm not. But uh, what else do I do? Uh, I do some acting. And I also tell jokes, usually for money. Meet your neighbor lady, Colleen. I'm a food service professional. <laughs> and meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. I memorize FERPA. FERPA? I do. What's FERPA? What's FERPA? Yeah, tell us more. Well, it, uh, you know, we, we have to follow certain guidelines and rules and codes of ethics when we work for the state of Minnesota. So it's just one of those little acronyms to keep you in line. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. There's so much I don't know. I don't know either. I feel like I should know this. Mm -hmm. FERPA. It sounds like FEMA. It sounds like any one of those acronyms that keep us all it in sounds, line. It sounds like lesbian slang. Well, it sounds like something that flies out of my cat's mouth. I mean, FERPA. FERPA, FERPA. 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 I don't know. FERPA. But I know it's serious. It's very serious. Do you have a lot of college degrees for FERPA? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a few. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Welcome back. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. We've got Boston, Karen J., Suzanne, and me, Colleen Cruz, and right now, we're going to talk about our problem of the day. Because I think we're all smart women here, don't you? Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Totally. Took a, it took a while. Took I a while know. to weigh in on that. We're radiating <laughs> well brainwaves. But, but even though we, might, we may or we may not be smart women, we are fully willing and capable. And, and nay, I, I will say... We want to weigh in on your problems. So you can send us a problem of the day if you wish. Message us privately at our Facebook page. At, uh, if you can find us on Facebook, Neighbor Ladies. Uh, and you can give us a problem of the day. And we'll, uh, we, we might weigh in on your problem. And I've got one. Are you ready? Oh, you yeah. ready for a problem yeah, of the day? Yeah, we're ready to yeah. solve it, girl. Because <laughs> we're going to solve this problem for, for our, uh, our, our fellow neighbor lady, Anonymous. She didn't want to sign it. Okay. And, and, I, and I'm reading it. No, it's not Suzanne. It's a real person that sent oh, me this. She's, she's I know, a, I know. She's on antibiotics and she's working with FERPA, so we got to worry about it. Dear neighbor ladies, my husband is watching a ton of internet porn. I admit, I like it too sometimes. But I have conflicting feelings about this because the women look nothing like me. They are perfect and I am not airbrushed and ready to go 24-7. I know porn is a fantasy, but our sex life is real. I find myself getting angry with him and jealous of women who don't exist. What should I do? Well, it doesn't sound like her, her marriage is in danger. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She's, she doesn't say that she's like ready to, ready to leave. She just sounds like maybe depression could be setting in uh, on this. I think she's having an affair. Really? Yeah. You think she is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Do yeah, you really? Yeah, it's a big cover. No. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, I would not have thought that. <laughs> really? There are cover. more women that are having affairs than... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean, because it's so much easier I now. see it in the whole... Well, women are smarter at it, too. I'm just... Yeah. They are. What do you mean by that? We don't get caught. I mean, we meaning. Well, you open the garage the door. Ladies. You open the garage door and you let his car go in during the day. I've seen it. <laughs> I thought it was the cleaning lady <laughs> with my neighbor. No, I don't do okay. that. Okay, it's, but four, I'm saying, it's four but blocks away. Women oh are just God. smarter. Like We're yeah, they pay are. more attention yeah. to detail. Do oh, we got to weigh in on this problem? Yeah, we got okay. to. We have to weigh in on this problem. Woman, to, yeah. Okay, so my husband's watching a ton of internet porn. I like it too sometimes. So that that right there says they've they've used this. Because that would have been one of my things. We'll try to get in on the act. So it clearly sounds like she's watched some of this with him. 
Yeah. You know, to try to sort of integrate it into their sex life. Uh, but she says, I have conflicting feelings about this because the women look nothing like me. They are perfect, and I am not airbrushed and ready to go 24-7. She, she knows porn is a fantasy, but her sex life is real. So she thinks, from what I'm gathering, is that she thinks that he's a little too far off into fantasy land, and he's not right there with her. Now, clearly he must be there with her, otherwise they wouldn't have a sex life. It doesn't sound like that's the case. She says, I find myself getting angry with him and jealous of women that don't exist. Okay. So is this about managing her jealousy, or is this about... The porn being, it doesn't sound like she thinks porn is wrong. Is no, what I'm no, I think she, I think she thinks porn is okay. I mean, if, if you've got somebody that's addicted to porn, that's doing, I don't know, what two, three hours a day, maybe that's what her man is doing. Mm-hmm. But um, if they set limits on the porn, you know, okay, <laughs> we're going to watch 15 minutes a piece, meet you back in the sack. You know, I mean, <laughs> you got to have boundaries, man. That's what it's all about. And uh, you played a sport in high school, didn't you? Damn right. Yeah, that sounds varsity like a, basketball. Yeah, that sounds like grade. a varsity basketball <laughs> thing to do. It really is. <laughs> Fifteen we minutes, boundaries. and then we're gonna come back. You're well, out of she, bounds. Seriously, pull, how? Pull. Okay, think of this. How great would your life be if he's watching two hours of porn and you say to him, two hours of porn? That's how much you've got to put into the bedroom, baby. Think about it. Equal time. Yeah. And if you are watching two hours of porn, the same thing. Spice it up, baby. You know, think about it. Okay. All right. I think she's you bored can't, with him. It's an investment. Yeah. I think she's bored with him. I think the whole thing's a cover. What leads you to believe that? Well, I think uh, I think she's just saying that to get rid of him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you think she's just starting to uh, the work, work? You know, to start com- the complaints so she can just. Get get out. Get out. Is this why you think she's having an affair? Yes. I must just be so gullible with my neighbors. I gotta. I'm gonna be listening in the hood with a different I'm, kind I of don't ear. Get that at all. I feel like she's. It's her jealousy that she needs. It's her issue. It's her issue. She's it's jealous. not him. Well, well jealousy I mean, is the man-made feeling, right? I mean, no. we're, to, to a degree. We have control over our emotions. Right. That's what, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever felt jealous before? A long time ago. Really, yeah. and then it just stopped. I don't know. Like. I, I, I think you get to a point when you're a woman that, I don't know, you just get to a certain age where you're just comfortable with, like you realize you only have control of you. Mm -hmm. You don't have control over him or her or whoever you're with. Right. Um, And that's about them. That's not about you. You have to take care of you and you have to, you're responsible for your own happiness. You know, she could, she should probably talk to him about it instead of writing into the neighbor ladies, but you know. Well, obviously she wants to figure she okay, so no, she she shared this with us, so we got to give some advice. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think she so she's asking her she's asking her girlfriends. You yeah. ask your girlfriends, right? Uh she finds herself getting angry with him and jealous of women who don't exist. So, what should she say if she's going to talk to him? That he's a figment of her imagination. <laughs> I, I think she should talk to him, and yeah. and, and definitely, because well, a lot of times, you know, you talk to your girlfriends about a serious issue in your marriage or relationship, and you spend a lot of time talking to them, and then by the time you get back to the man to talk to him, it's like, oh, it really wasn't that big a deal, but it did tick me off. And then the next time it happens, you realize you never solved the problem, you never talked to him about it, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So she should just talk to him. Forget okay. the girlfriends. Well, what? Well, no, but... <laughs> well, I mean, okay, I'll we, forget them later, but you know... But she's talking to us now. Okay. For well, the purposes, okay. she put it in. She a, should let him know that it bothers her. Yeah, yeah. Like, it obviously does. Get honest she's about saying. it. Yeah, like it's. It sounds like her issue's not with porn. It's the fact that he's watching it without her. All right. Yeah. 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 Because clearly he's watching. She but, says he's watching a ton. We don't know how much that is. And and that can uh, studies have shown that that can affect him. Like men who watch a lot of porn, they can't like, get it. it up they get anymore. desensitized, and they, or they can't ejaculate. mm Hmm. They can't um, do it unless they're watching a right. ton. Yeah. So that could be a problem. And then that's, but then all she can do is say something to him and then it's up to him to either fix it or, you know, get out. Yeah. Right. This is so much, well, uh, this is kind of a new thing too. I mean, a new thing, meaning like in the last 15 years, yeah. wouldn't you say? Yeah. So we don't even know. We don't even know how over time how this is going to affect i mean it definitely could become an addiction and it, and it does like change the chemicals in your brain you know yeah i didn't know that yeah um 
I mean, it's a, I think it can be a healthy thing when a, when a couple agrees to watch it together and the type of porn they're watching together. Uh-huh. You know, they both have to be okay with it. And then, but, like, the part where, like, she's like, oh, I look nothing like them, they're perfect, whatever, like, that's her issue. She needs to get over that. Right. Because, like, he's they're, with not, her. they're not real. Like, no. <laughs> no, it would be like saying you know, Fred Flintstone is real. Or, like, oh, right? I hate that bitch on the Victoria's Secret magazine cover. <laughs> like, she's not real. Mm-hmm. She's photoshopped. She's, like, airbrushed. Right. It's you not know? even her own. Yeah, it's, it could be different people glued together on so yeah they i think they need to like have a serious talk or maybe go to counseling or or if he isn't going to be if he's not going to be receptive to what she says then she needs to kick him the fuck out do you remember the first time do you remember the first time you ever like the first time somebody ever put porn i mean and this is like back in vcr days right like i remember i was in high school and we were we were going to go swimming. There was a, a guy that I was dating, and his uncle had a, a cool apartment that had an indoor pool, right? Yeah. And his uncle was going to be out of town for the weekend, and his uncle gave my boyfriend the keys to his apartment. And so we were having a party at this guy's uncle's apartment. And we were going to drink, and we were going to smoke pot, and we were going to smoke cigarettes, and probably we were going to go off into the bedrooms, right? And we were going to swim. And swimming is a great activity for horny teenagers because you get to be practically naked, right? And I remember showing up at the... And I'd been dating this guy for a while, so I thought, oh, this is awesome. You know, this is tonight's the night. And I got to this party in Roseville, Minnesota. Because that's where all sexy stuff happens in right, Roseville, Minnesota. Right. I got to this party. I don't right. know why I looked at you when I said Roseville, Right Minnesota. near the mall. Right, right near the mall. <laughs> and I got On to the this edge party. Of the parking lot. And so. there were none of the girls were there yet. And they had the VCR going. The boys had the VCR going. And they had a movie on. And it was a dirty, it was an X rated movie. And I thought, mm, no. But it was like a, it was like a group setting. Right. Yeah. I mean, all of a sudden, fine if that's how guys. And I do think that's a, there's a weird thing where guys actually watch porn together and bond. What the hell? Where Grant, our our handyman, is shaking his head. But they were clearly watching it. So how many guys went to see Magic Mike alone? Well, that's true. You know what I'm saying? But that's mm-hmm. not that's not actual. Uh, we wanted it to, we an, wanted it to be though insertion. Did you really? Well, I was with my 70-year-old sister-in-law, but I really can't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> she did. She told me this. Can you imagine this? She's 70 years old. It's her birthday. And she says, God, I just wanted them all naked, and I wanted to see the action. And our voices are not exactly quiet at the Marcus Theater in Rosemount. <laughs> <laughs> I love Marcus Theater. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's yeah. just so good. It was so worth it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I digress, but I felt it was important. So, well, it is important. So, okay, I take it back because so a lot of women they'll go see uh, what the we'll Australian go see dancers, something. Yeah, the Thunder yeah. Down Under, yeah. Chip and Dale's. We Magic did that Mike. for a bridal shower for my niece. I couldn't believe it. I, well, we want you to drive. You're the sober one. Um, we'll get you a free <laughs> ticket to see the Thunder Down Under. And I didn't know what we were seeing. I really had no clue. Koala I thought, bears. <laughs> I, I well, I knew that it wasn't you know furry. But anyways, we so no, yeah. not anymore. Everybody's waxed now. That's right. yeah, it's all hardwood floors now. <laughs> yep. The tree looks taller when there's no brush around. I was it. briefed. <laughs> anyways, how, so you how, all how did. was the thunder? How down was under? that? How was that weird? Sexual... Flipping great. We went back to the second show too. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Wait, do you think they're they're as good as the Chippendales? Or better? Or not as good? Or uh, since I'd never seen the chip, I no, I did see the Chippendales in Vegas with my mother and my sister. <laughs> My sister got his tickets and said, we're going to have a family bonding moment. So you have done this as yeah. a bonding moment. Yeah, this yeah, is like, we did. Like all the pa- the women of the pack get together and they go watch a bunch of men sexualizing yeah, and I, themselves. But, but, but now it's a thing I've never with done bridal that. showers. You know, it was... But you know, it's, it's always been a thing with bridal showers. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I just... Yeah, yeah, apparently yeah. I, my bridal showers were very boring that I've gone to in the neighborhood, <laughs> you know. The ones where you run out with the apron and all the different things attached to it. You play mm-hmm. Dice? Dice? Yeah. Do you ever do that at bridal shower? Playing dice. No. Play like dice. gambling? Well, like like dominoes dice? Or? Trying to shoot uh, Oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I've played that. For prizes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, the for games? sure. For sure. And the pie plate or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I would say though it was really a lot of fun to go see b- both all the guys. It was just a blast. Oh, they were all amazing. It was yeah. all well, color well, me I surprised. Think, Out I of everybody it, here, I didn't expect you would be the one that yeah. did like sort of group porny. Well, I don't organize it now, cool. but I mean, if the event, if the event comes up, <laughs> there's like way more to Boston than meets the eye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I'm wicked old man. I'm a fossil. What can I tell you? Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever. All don't right. Talk yeah. about yourself like that. I think we figured it out. Okay, so what? You're she's got to talk to my self-esteem. I love it. Thank you. Okay, back to the back to the, the, the problem. Um, she's got to talk to her husband. She's got to figure out some uh, self esteem for herself, right? And how can she do that? I don't know. Get Everybody some therapy. Sh- get some. Well, I don't. Get some. Get some antidepressants. Get some photos airbrushed. Yeah, there you That's go. That's true. Yeah. Get a get a oh, go to glamour a, shots. Glamour shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, well, seriously. She just needs to start I doing stuff for her. I wonder if the glamour her. shot people have ever been asked to do nudes. I bet they have. Oh, I'm sure. Well, isn't it? There's probably the, some secret photographer that does no, the... No, there's, there's photographers that only do, like, boudoir or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, boudoir. boudoir. Whatever. I was... <laughs> Boudoir. Okay. Boudoir. 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 Wait, how do you say it? Yeah. Boudoir. 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 It's French for dirty in the bedroom. Right. <laughs> Boudoir. Boudoir. That was my second major in college. <laughs> yeah, so there, there are plenty of photographers French. that do that. Okay. Sorry. I think, okay, so that's, that's the answer to the problem of the day. Okay. When we come back, it's our food segment here on The Neighbor Ladies, Casserole Corner. Meet your neighbor lady, Boston. Recreation, what's my favorite thing to do in my spare time? Play basketball naked. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't say that. Next. (laughs) Meet your neighbor lady. Dribble, dribble. Karen J. (laughs) Well, in my spare time, I like to masturbate a lot. What? My therapist says it's really getting out of hand and I need to think outside my box. Meet your Karen. I'm sorry, that That's one was okay, good. Grant. That was a good one. That was the best. That was a good one. Meet your neighbor lady, Colleen. In my spare time, I like to eat and watch TV at the same time. <laughs> eat what? Anything. Meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. Oh, in my spare time, I like to eat and eat and eat. Is that it? That's it. All right. Welcome back. You're listening to The Neighbor Ladies. And in your spare time, you like to eat and eat and eat and eat yes. and eat. Are you a big yeah. cook? You like to cook uh, no. Well, you know, I catered for 10 years, and I, when I catered, I cooked. And mm-hmm. I just, I, I'm tired of it. No, I just like to eat shit. You know, like my, my, my kids think I eat like a seven year old. I, my favorite food is really cotton candy. It's, yeah. You eat cotton candy? All the time. Really? The time. Yeah. I wouldn't have guessed the that. The pre made cotton candy? Yeah. The yeah. only way I can stomach cotton candy is if it's fresh off the, the whirly oh, gig that they right, make it. Right, right. I cannot have that pre made cotton candy yeah, because I, I, I don't can. like it either. It's crazy. That is wow. super sugary. That is, yeah. I mean, it's all sugar. That's I'd like awesome. to see Boston eat, eat some cotton candy. And I, and I like <laughs> to, I, you know, I like sure. to, to lick Buzzing. it and watch it dissolve. dissolve. Yeah. I think that's your, your old addict talk. I think it could be. Oh, yeah. I think oh. that is. Yeah. Don't yeah. tell anybody. They say sugar okay. is, is like what? Her- it, it's a drug. Or something. It's a drug. It's like as bad as like yeah. heroin. Right. Sugar is. Very difficult to get rid of sugar, though. Yeah. Very difficult to get rid of sugar. So, impossible. Yeah, almost yeah. impossible. I, I know people who have done it, but they're humorless and wrong. Right. Um, casserole corner. This is where we talk about food. And the topic that I chose, although we could talk about sugar, why is bacon on everything? <laughs> have you guys noticed that? Bacon, bacon cupcakes, bacon frosting, bacon. There's a, my girlfriend, Laura, is a wonderful cook. She is actually a chef, and she made her brother-in-law a cake and it had big candied bacon strips. She she sectioned off the cake, you know, it was a nine inch round cake, and it was chocolate with bacon bits on the side, and then a big slice of thick candied bacon on each. T- and chocolate and bacon actually does taste, and maple bacon tastes really good together. But I'm kind of done with the bacon. Yeah, there's yeah, bacon and everything. Bacon mac and cheese, bacon this, bacon that. I, I'm I'm done. 
I can't, I can't do, it's like mac and cheese. Everybody did the mac and cheese thing for a while, right? The food trend. Oh, yeah. Everybody did mac and cheese. 50 and then, ways to have mac and cheese. Right, lobster mac and cheese, four cheese uh, mac, seafood. seven cheese mac and cheese, yeah. right? It's usually, they cap out at four. It's yeah. never the five cheese mac and cheese. It's always the four cheese mac and cheese or the three cheese mac and cheese. And then it was uh, mashed potatoes, right? Everything had to be mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes with this kind of sauce or that cheese sauce or whatever. And now it's bacon. And cupcakes. Cupcakes was another one, right? Yeah, cupcakes. Cupcakes I, are kind of a fad, too. I love cupcakes. Yeah. I love cupcakes, too, because they're automatically portioned out. Yes. And they're tiny. Mm-hmm. And you can sort of trick yourself into thinking that I'm not eating yeah. two yeah. pieces of cake when, when you've really had four cupcakes. And that's two That night that I cake. ate three of your homemade cupcakes. I do like to make homemade cupcakes. I like true. weighed myself the next day. I was five pounds heavier. You were not. Yes, I was. No, you weren't. I, yeah, Colleen, was, I was. Have you ever had bacon cupcakes? But it was so worth yes, it. Yes, I've had bacon cupcakes. Yeah, it just seems like, what, I, I don't know. I, there's just too much bacon. There's too, too much, much bacon. bacon. On, you know, the Washington I mean, Post and said, bacon, you know? Yeah, the Washington Post said that it's a $6.10 billion business. Bacon? Bacon. But the bacon people pe- must be really happy. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a there's... marketing deal. People, you put bacon on something, they're going to buy it, and it's, it's just gone nuts. It's, it's also gone kind nuts. of like, I think it's like the preferred food of potheads and men. Just you know what I mean? Yeah. What do you think? At the state fair, Stupid they have that man. big fat bacon booth. Yeah. Yeah. Where you just get a stick of bacon on a stick. Yeah. Or a right. slice of bacon on a stick. Right. So they stick seriously stick. deep fry the bacon? I got to pay more attention. No, the, it's not uh, deep fried. It's just a big piece of bacon that's on a, on a skewer. So you yeah. can sort of. So they yeah. were so you can walk at, around and eat it like beef jerky. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. in the morning at, at the state fair, they went over to the pig farm. The pig area. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know where I'm right. going with this, old barbecuers. Right. They got right. the chefs. They killed those little piglets. And then later on, we're having it on a stick. Well, I don't think that's the babies. You know what I don't like well, to see at the state all fair? pigs are great. Somebody with a giant uh, bucket of Martha's cookies, sweet Martha's cookies. Yeah. And one of those paper pig hats. <laughs> You know, with the ears? Yeah. And they aren't it even, drives me crazy. They aren't but even it's drunk so fitting. Yet, and it's they look fitting, like though. that. That's what gets me. You know? It's, it's, I don't know. I just, and I'm not real happy about Martha's cookies. They aren't very good. I don't think they're that great either. I don't think they're that good. Well, can we say that? We can say that. Are we allowed to say that either? I really don't think they're that great. They're not a sponsor. We only hope they're better this year. <laughs> we do. We I hope think- that they're better. Because so many things could be better about them. <laughs> I know. I feel like the only people who really love Martha's cookies are people who don't know how to bake cookies themselves. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I think cookies, guys like it. Look, I have, a, I have a cooking story that. for you that occurred this week. Well, you guys probably yeah. know this, that I spent, um, let's see, my last day was, as a lunch lady was June 15th, 2015. Not that I'm counting the hours. How long were you a lunch lady? Uh, eight years. And wow. three years, the last three years um, managing 24 women. I tried to hire the men, but they died on the way to the line, I have to say. <laughs> but I got to tell you, um, okay, so I'm making a chocolate cake this week. Uh, my stepmother's birthday going to be a double layer and my I love to cook and um but I got these pans these new pans and I didn't know that if you didn't have x amount of batter in them that they would burn the hell out of the cake so the big double layer cake became a (laughs) single layer but I did some I I love chocolate and I found out that so I'm burning the cake and now on Monday night I got to call my dad goes because she has Alzheimer's she's having a good 72 hours I go good let's celebrate her birthday tomorrow night it's a week early so I'm getting, I'm excited. That's why I'm making this cake. So I get this cake out of the oven, and it's like burnt to death. So now I've got to figure out how to tell the whole family, hey, you've burned the cake. I've burnt the cake. Right. But the other layer looked beautiful. This is a very June Cleaver problem. Uh-huh. Oh my God! I, I'm like, okay. So I text my dad, hey, I made the cake. Uh, does she like chocolate? And he sends me this big. My dad loves to text. Big letters that says, make it a small cake. And I'm going, sweet Jesus, there's no way. That's great. It's awesome. Just one layer. So now i got to make this one layer look like a big cake. So I am thinking bacon and things I'm going to put on the cake. Okay? So I just You went a, into your other cupboards to find stuff that you could add to add the cake on top to make of the it cake taller? To make it taller because I'm going to be late for work, right? Oh my God, I had so much fun. So I get, I get, this is, this cake is covered with so much frosting. 
<laughs> and I'm thinking, it's got to go in the fridge. So it goes in the fridge. My daughter finds to it firm later. firm it up. To firm it up. And I have texted her with the problem. She gets up and decides it needs another layer of crap. So she has some old candy in the bedroom that she pulls out. I don't know where she gets the candy. She decorates the She's cake. She's a secret eater. Secret eater. And, well, we, she was, <laughs> knows no more secrets now, let me tell you. I'm like, that explains a little rodent issue. So <laughs> I was a secret eater, too. Oh, my gosh. There's no secrets when I'm eating. I mean, if I want chocolate in the nightstand, girls, just put it there and be proud. You know what I right. mean? You want 2 o'clock in the morning, you have a mood. I had a whole drawer. She loved the cake because my daughter put a drawer. I had a drawer food. This could be a whole food. Com what was my in the drawer? My daughter did that, too. Chips. 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 Why am chocolate. I yeah. Soda. Yeah, well, I couldn't keep a lobster in the bed stand, but I would have tried. <laughs> <laughs> I would have tried a little lobster in a tank. Did you guys ever have sea monkeys as a kid? Oh, I wanted them God, because I they thought they had fun. crowns on them. Well, they don't. They're so tiny. And when I was, they were like this tall, you know, but you could see them. I always thought they had faces. They, they just were brine shrimp. This know? is our food segment. Oh, oh because I'm they're sorry. shrimp. I get it. I, I, thought we were no, talking, I, I thought we were talking about our pets. No, oh, no, but I loved it because I was trying to figure out why. But I was like, you're, okay, you went from I, lobster to sea monkeys. I get it. I totally get it. It's, yeah. it's just try, and what, this so is what why, happened this is why the, I don't the candy drink. Layer yeah, on what this happened cake. with the cake? Oh, she loved it. It was phenomenal. But the thing was, I blew it. I didn't have a birthday candle in the house. You know all those stupid tea lights you keep? <laughs> I put a little tea light on it, and we put, put some whipped cream around the tea light. It was phenomenal. That sounds like an awesome ghetto cake. It was, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. And, you know, she's this refined British woman, and uh, she but loved it. She has Alzheimer's, right? Well, I, I don't know. I, that's what oh. they tell me. But, I, I, you know, I, I think, I, think I, I have no My idea. My dad had Alzheimer's. Yeah. My dad had Alzheimer's. And there was this guy that uh, was in... I would sometimes visit at, uh, you know, he lived for 12 years after his diagnosis and only for the last two years was he, um, was he in assisted living. And there was a, uh, this lunchroom, right, where everybody would eat lunch. And for, it was the locked or the unlocked ward, so it was people who were not ambulatory anymore. And there was this guy, and you could tell, in, I, I would come and visit my dad during the lunchtime. And there was this guy, the nurses kind of, it was in a cafeteria type setting, right? Things are on compartmentalized trays, everything all at once. You know, you get your, your vegetable, your main course, your, your salad and your dessert. And there was this guy in the, in the, um, in the assisted living cafeteria and he was talking to the nurse, right, this woman, and he was calling her waitress, which I thought was very funny <laughs> because clearly his mind was somewhere else. And with Aww. Alzheimer's, you got to laugh because if you don't laugh, what else are you going to do, right? And this guy was screaming after her, and he was like, waitress, <laughs> waitress, and he had chocolate all over his face, right, just smeared like a, like a, like a total kid, like a, like a three-year-old kid. And, and he said, I have no cake. And he was looking down like there was the square of his cake on his, it was gone. He'd eaten it the first thing. And like he saw it and ate it. And he said, everyone else here has cake. I have no cake. Where is my cake? And she said, oh, sir, you've, you've had your cake. You know, she was trying to say something because she didn't want him to get upset. But I thought, there's a problem. I probably would eat my cake first, and I probably, even if I kind of knew yeah. that I had already eaten it, I would probably make a stink and pretend. Oh, for oh, sure. I would sure. Everybody exactly. wants more cake. Everybody anyway, she cake. liked it. It was awesome. I probably should not have talked about that because that's Why? personal Why? family. It's personal family business. Oh, you'll have to learn how to do it. Oh, I'll have to learn radio. how to do it. It's Your good. family's it's never going to listen to this. Yeah, that's that's, that's right. the truth. It's that's just a practice show. You're right. I'm in a lot. We've, oh, we've a practice sworn. Show, we've talked about. We've mm -hmm. said the word cock. I believe in the first hour. I think it was the first. We were talking 10 about minutes. chickens. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, we've we've said all kinds of things. No, I'm. Uh, yeah. It's no, okay. she loved the cake. Um, but anyways, that that was my uh, food thing. Okay. My contribution. I like it. Meet your neighbor, lady, Boston. Well, my family. Wow, what do I say? I am the mean mom of the family. I have a 17 and 18 year old, and um, they love it when I give them a star on their chore chart at age 17. That's nice. Meet your neighbor lady, Karen J. Well, I am a mama bear. 
I have a boy cub who has just turned 18. He just graduated from high school. Woohoo! That was like, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to talk shit, but we were all a little worried there. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully, I'll be saving money because he's going to go to community college. <laughs> My daughter, Cub, is she's very a very good student. She is 19, almost 20. She is uh, going to be a sophomore at DePaul University in Chicago. Very cool. Yes. And she's yeah. pretty self-sufficient, except she calls home quite often asking for money. Snap, right. snap cash. <laughs> snap cash? Yeah, it's like instant. Really? Yeah. You'll have to tell me more about that. Yeah. Everybody needs snap cash. Mm -hmm. Meet your neighbor lady, Colleen. Uh, about my family, I, uh, I am the proud parent of two lovely children that I have procured from previous sexual experiences. <laughs> Meet your neighbor lady, Suzanne. I am the proud mother of two children as well. Um, different as night and day. Uh, my oldest is a West Point grad and my youngest is um, a child with rhythm. Let's just leave it at that. All right, this was the neighbor ladies. Thanks for joining us everyone. See you next week.